strategies in the end. It's just that EG have some very nice pick potential with the Thresh and the LeBlanc. And then Curse have the Vi and the Leona. So it's just a couple different sources here. But man, this is going to be uh, quite exciting. I think Quas up in the top lane for Shivana um, is going to be a, a farm heavy lane until EG make a call for a dive or something like that. Because Karthus, he is susceptible to dives in the early game. Not very high defensive stats early. That's pretty much all he has to watch out for. Last Early time, invade from Last EG. time they did this, they allowed Yellow Pete to go up. They kind of did the same thing as so, well. We saw uh, XDG do this. Man Cloud was the one to go into the bottom, and then he came up, uh -huh. and they tried to... Uh, this is a good route. I mean, they took a lot of precautions going a long way around, staying in the Fog of War, getting around the edge mm -hmm. here. And then they do all that work, and Cop is just standing there at the ramp. That's why so many teams have defaulted to the one man at each ramp in the river, we're just going to see what your plans are and back off. What's really going to be uh, the tell here is if EG stay until the 150 mark, if they go for the late invade onto the blue buff. Because that's really the only option left in them. There's no more surprise. They have to wait till Cop backs off and goes to like help with that blue buff. Meanwhile, you know, Vi's starting red, so oh. it won't be a contested blue buff. It'll be... Just Snoopy trying to steal it away yep. if they go for a late invade. And that's it's always annoying as a jungler to try and start your first buff fighting the other duo. So they go for the standard one. This means that it is going to be the Leona and Ezreal who get the first level two down bottom because they're in lane already shoving. We'll see if they decide to go strong on that. Cop and well, St. Vicious shoving. in the bottom lane. Well, actually, no, they aren't. We can yeah. see them kind of freezing that lane in the bottom. Boy Boy and Pole Belter, the LeBlanc versus a Kali lane or something we will come back to as wow. Yellow Pete and Crapo finally come to lane. It's only been one CS really taken in here. So like you said, they held it. Yeah. Uh, you can tell by the way that Curse are standing, positioning himself in this lane. They're going to be very defensive early. Uh, uh, St. Vicious just wants that side bush control. In a Leona Thresh matchup, side bush control is huge. Hooks that come out of Fog of War from one of those bushes, much easier to land mm -hmm. than the ones in full vision. And meanwhile, Leona always looking for the opportunity to go in for the Zenith Blade and then stun. Well, Pole Belter's beating up that tadpole. He's getting as much as he can. Boy Boy hitting too after Pole Belter. So you can see a little bit of an advantage here. And we know Pole Belter for going very early. The last matchup there, that was first blood. So we'll see if he can do it once again. He has Boy Boy under the turret. Boy Boy will fare pretty well. Akali does okay there. All right, once he does get under his turret, you know, he's already used his shroud, so he will take harass under turret. Um, it's really Pabelter's job at this point. You know, he's ex sort of exposed himself to ganks. He needs to make use of the time of this wave shoved up to turret Ooh. and try and continue to harass Boy Boy. If he can make him burn through all of his HP... Oh, here we go. Snoopy looking... Wait a minute. Snoopy trying to go really hard on this one. He is getting the damage down, and it looks like down to 300, down to about 200. He will not go in with the passive. Boy Boy starts backing up the help. And Snoopy now has control over Dominate's jungle. Probably going to take away hmm. the big Wraith and the big Golem. That will be a large amount of money that Dominate will miss out on and have to clear those camps because he will want to continue farming that red side jungle. Boy Boy doing will what he, he can. Will he meet him, though? He could meet He's going to try to. Golems. All of his lanes seem to be doing pretty well. Crepo, very nice play there, but still gets stunned up. Yellow Pete able to answer back with all the damage onto St. Vicious. The cop trying to do what he can to stave off a little bit more of the fight. So Snoopy has the stronger lanes. All three are right. right Dominates yeah. able to steal away one because the smite was used already from Snoopy. No, I kind of would have liked to see Snoopy do the same thing. Wait in the bush up at the double golems for Dominate to come. There's no guarantee that Dominate will go up there, though. So mm. it's a risky play. But if you force the other jungle, if you get to jump on him twice and force him back twice, then it's a huge win. And he would put him really far behind. But Dominate is able to get his golem back, and yep. so they're pretty much back to even. Yeah, he's up in CS right now since Snoopy was trying to do the counter jungling. So we'll see if it really hurts Dominate all that much. Still in this bottom lane, 26 to 24 in CS. No real action really came out of the level two here. We saw a bit of aggression from St. Vicious, but it's just flayed away, and Yellow Pete's really able to come up with the double damage. 
back onto Cop and St. Vicious. So they're considering their engagements. Mm -hmm. 600 gold down. EG in the lead. Those Ooh. engagements. There they Crepo. are. <laughs> Not so good. That was a great move from Crepo. Most of the plays early in the duo lanes come mm -hmm. from supports uh, because the, the ADs are consistently concentrating on the last hitting. And the supports have so many more tools at their disposal. Crepo definitely doing a good job. Taking the opportunity with his thrash. Very nice flay play there. We saw definitely reminded of X Special during the All-Star tournament there. <laughs> Just always interrupting St. Vicious on Jarvan with his combos. Oh. Now St. Vicious again, having nightmares. A thresh interrupting his combos. This time he's on support. <laughs> Same old problem. Still, still the flag tosses play. We'll see if they can get it back in. He has the solar flare, flare coming up in just two levels. Void Boy looking to hit level six as well. He's halfway up to six. And right now, Pobelter is only a few minions away. We're going to see if they try to go on this. Newbie sitting in the wing. Mm, and he's got a pink ward too. That could make the gank. Oh, oh flashes for the oh, channel to him. Q comes in, they flip it back. Void Boy doesn't have the shroud, and he's going to go down for first blood to Pobelter. Yeah, you're right. Saved the pink ward. Didn't even have to use it there. Shroud already down. Yep. And Belter able to capitalize. Snoopy with another gank here. Very strong start for him. And he needs to make those ganks successful because Dominate is just hard farming the jungle. And he's getting that CS up there. Snoopy coming in on these champions. He hasn't played in a, in a while, at least, or he may say for Volibear as well. Really showing impressive stuff. Have a thousand gold lead for EG now after that gank. Pole Belter getting going is not what Curse needed. Yeah, that's was pretty much the story of the last time these two met. Mm -hmm. For Belter, once he got a foothold in that mid lane, he was able to use that money and that confidence to consistently not only outplay mid lane, but also outplay the jungle. So, you know, sort of increasing his influence from just his lane to affect the entire game. Pole Belter going back in the Fiendish Codex along with two rings. So he's quite ahead of Void Boy here as he just went back for the tomb. Or really Tome rather, and the boots. He, Void Boy level six. Could be looking for Dominate to come in here. Assault and battery is up. Yeah. He's he's all grown up here, but he doesn't have yeah. a lot of damage added. You right. Know, he still has to play a little cautiously, and you do have to wait for your charges on your ulti to stack up before you go real aggressive. He'll definitely want to combo with Dominate who is level 6 now. So his next gank will be a lot stronger. I actually see Dominic coming in with the Dorans as well, but even though he got countered, he's 41 to 27 still in that. There is the assist to Snoopy, but mm -hmm. Dominic's trying to keep himself in this. Yeah, Snoopy trying to go more gank heavy, and mm -hmm. Dominic trying to farm up to that level 6. Right. Um, he'll, he'll probably try and use that ulti pretty soon here. Um, and the best thing for him since he's got a mid laner who is manaless, he has to take the blue for himself. Oh, Every jungler okay. likes that. <laughs> Vi especially benefits so much from cooldown reduction. He's going to be very happy taking that one away. But I kind of want to turn my eyes towards the top lane because there's been a lot of discussion about AP top laners um, now right. in the tank heavy meta. Quas has been constantly having success with this card that's up top. And you can see it here again. You know, he just wards up very well, and he CSs from a safe distance, just waiting, biding his time until he can get beefy. He's actually gone with a giant's belt just to make sure if they come for the dive, then he'll be okay. Oh, oh the massive God. gets blown through right away. The Requiem coming in. Quas, story of this Requiem. A little too late. Yep, there's the <laughs> combo. They were able to use it with the boy boy. Hello. Right. That's that aggression. Yeah, but Pope Belter's just saying, okay, you get you got a little confident with that kill, but don't try <laughs> that with me. Uh oh. Enox getting a little sticky situation here. He should be okay with the burnout. Dragon's descent to get himself out as well. And Curse is gonna use this to get themselves a dragon. Very nicely played. Gonna come up with a kill. The dragon and the equaling of the gold. So I have to say, Dominic kept his head about him. When the early invade yeah. came, he was not flustered. And he just farmed up his jungle, got to the level six. He played to his champion's power curve. Once he got his Vi power with the ultimate, goes in for the answer. And yep. Void Boy as well, playing to his power curve, waiting for that tadpole to grow up. They capitalize on it. Not only is it just the kill, but also the dragon really helps them out because they need the experience as well as the gold from that. 
Dominate. He's been through worse. It's not the blue buff stolen at level one, so he's faring quite well right now. Oh, Void yeah. Boy and Poe Belter, both level eight in the mid lane. And that's looking like what it is around the map as well. Everybody's keeping a pretty consistent level. Crepo and Yellow P. Almost a bit of the same matchup we saw last game, but a lot less aggression between the two compositions here in the bot lane. Yeah, especially from the, the curse lane. They've constantly positioned themselves back mm -hmm. in the lane, playing very, very defensively. Janupe is just barely able to see that ward. <laughs> just out of vision. They're trying to gain as much control as possible right now. Nobody has a definitive lead. We saw the dragon just being pressured out by Curse, so they have that timer quite nicely to themselves. And it looks like Snoopy may be in the bottom side of the jungle here for the next few minutes. They could try to work on something, but keep saying over and over, bottom lane is not getting any attention this game. Now, I've... I'm really curious as to what's going to happen with the mid lane because mm. both of those assassins like to roam when they get a little ahead. Once they shove a lane, they would love to get you right. know, side lane kills here. But you can look at the ward coverage. It's EG all the way. They're just dominating the map right now as far as vision is controlled. Both defensive pink wards already placed. As I said, I love those defensive ones because they're easy to defend. Five hits is a long time for an enemy to stay there. And you can call your team down to react. Meanwhile, Curse have been saving money on not purchasing quite as many wards, and they've been farming up extremely effectively, trying to get to that late game mm -hmm. where they have fed Akali, fed Karthus. Right. Well, hopefully, all of them being fed and that wall of pain from Karthus can stop the stampede we have yet to see here. Yellow Pete and Crepo still staying in the bottom lane. We haven't seen that on the hunt come in for Snoopy. Oh, the pink, pink ward goes down. They throw him out. It's going to be the lockup. Can the chain hit? Oh, no chain hit. Tell him, boy, boy. That is going to be Quaz coming in. Is he late? The wall of pain hits up. They're going on to Snoopy. The passive is up, and it is going to keep him alive. No, they dive even harder. And it's going to be Yellow Pete going down in the bottom lane. We got action everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. And it's a double kill for Boy Boy. And Karthus still has his ultimate. They could even go for more down bottom. And they are going to take more and a little bit after that. They go ahead wow. and get the kill onto Crepo. Slowly, St. Vicious is going to make it out alive from the bottom lane engagement. And we see a bit of the top going down. Great turret take there. As we said, Curse playing calm until they're able to turn the switch here. Great teleport down from Karthus. Quas is able to turn that gank around. And again, they're getting Voiboy going here. Two kills now. Going to have to start worrying about that Akali. There's the Woo! full combo that's possible with the Leona Ezreal. Playing far back until they are able to land that successfully. The full burst, and then Kreppel stays around at the turret by himself. Boop. A pretty easy finish there from the two versus one situation. Now Inox is deep in the jungle. Got a good wall there. We'll have the ability to kite. Looking to get some skittles down on the feet of Inox, but he backs out. It looks like he's got himself a red buff off of that last engagement or stealing it away during the replay. Boy Boy back to mid lane. It looks like he is not in a safe spot, though. He's got enemies on both sides of him right now. Yeah, you can, you can really tell. Everyone on Curse is very confident in the scaling of their champions. They, they're they just very, very, very cool and collected with the plays, reacting to EG's moves and turning pretty much everything around. And Pole Belter definitely into the playmaking today. He home guards right away on those boots. Going to get back to lane, get some kills in his team's favor. He's already got one for himself. We saw that first blood come in with the help of Snoopy, and he's, they've tried a second time. And now they just keep hovering the top side of this jungle. Pole Belter is trying to get up there and kill Quas. Yeah, he's he's actually wasted a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Pole Belter with another roam, ineffective this time. They had the ward coverage, but they haven't been able to capitalize. St. Vicious is constantly going to be looking for those from the bush. And that's why I say, you know, oh. side bush control, very important in that lane. You can see that's why both of them have warded each of the long side lane bushes. Makes it much easier to dodge those skill shot CCs. Oh man, four man bottom here. So this is very reminiscent of the Cloud9 game. But Cursor actually waiting for their opportune moment. Inox, uh -oh. Inox says he has the other hand here. Even Death Defy won't kill him, and it's not going to. With the wall being down, he walks out of this easily in the 1v1 versus Quas. Shaping up to be a four on four down bottom. Boy, boy, a little bit late though. Oh, they know the Requiem's not here to fight this. Beautiful job going in, but I think they may have 
thought this one wrong. A kill going in, it is going to be on to Snoopy. They turn it, no, Cop goes down now. And it is back and forth. Yeah, Boy Boy goes Gets under. Two. The assist comes in with he the goes reset. For three. Going for the third one. A little too hypey on that one. No, it can't get the kill. It's going to be Saint going down as he tries to take up the turret. What a bloodbath down bottom. But meanwhile, all that action, Inox capitalizing on his solo kill, gets half of the inhibitor turret health. Remember, inhibitor turrets do regenerate, though. Uh, that's 15 health. Oh, here we go. We're going to watch the uh, the replay once again. Oh. Dominic, Dominic goes right through that box and then back in onto Crepo. In and out. Uh, Snoop are trying to do work on Cop, not able to finish him, but Yellow Pete does. And here goes Boy Boy, chaining two. One on two. Yellow Pete second onto Crepo. Goes back into Pabelter, but that's all of his charges. And he doesn't want to chase any longer. Just kicking people right in the mouth over and over. Brings himself up to 4-1-1 one and one on the game. And that's what you were talking about, Kobe. They were waiting for that time to roam. They were given that chance. Dominate clearing out the ward, but EG are waiting in the side. And they get the hook oh. on the cop. Nobody's there to capitalize. Even if Crepo had gone over, he just would have yeah. died by himself. <laughs> All he had was a little bear sitting there. Snoopy can't add much to the four-man curse who are already grouping up for Dragon. Quas is going to be a little bit late. It looks like he wants to cheat and farm that mid lane. So Curse don't really want to commit to the Dragon fight until they absolutely have to. Now, who do you give the upper hand here in the Dragon fight composition? Uh, curse, because they've got that uh, Karthus, and he has completed Rylai's. If you group up inside that Dragon pit, Quas is going to have a field day. Plus, he has his Requiem available, so that's just so much guaranteed damage on the entire team. But it's actually Curse starting it out, and oh. they engage! Solar Flare, oh, the ult hits three, but just on the side! A quick kill coming in. Saint actually stays alive right now, but he goes down in the end after Boy Boy. Double kill coming in for Snoopy. Very nice on the passive of Volibear, keeping alive just a little bit longer, but it does not look like the fight Ooh. that Curse wanted They there. started that a little bit early. Quas was still in the mid lane. Quas had to come and flash into the fight after Boy Boy was already dead. He didn't get to add the zoning that they need with this ch set of champions. Curse starting up that dragon a little bit overzealous. You can see Quas is farming in the mid lane, and there they go. As soon as it hits, they're able to all go in, and it looks good, but Boy Boy commits. They can drop pink wards. They can see him even if he had gotten his shroud down. And then Quas, you can see after they're already dead, he wants to come commit. He flashes in, but they're only able to answer one. And it's a big win for EG. This is definitely exactly what they wanted to get back in this game. A huge boost of confidence there for EG as they're able to grab the gold lead. And remember, as confident as Curse are with the scaling, EG are the ones with Sivir this time around. So they've got the movement advantage towards the late game. They can actually uh, definitely run away with this one too. As we heard in the CLG interview, she's great for the late game. As soon as you see anyone out of yep. position, they can chase him down. A lot of people have been kind of weaning off that jinx. We see Sivir even more in EU. We got to remember Smithy's Sivir last week. He went something like 8 1 and 8 on it. She's making a comeback here. And Yellow Pete making it work as well for the team a little bit in these engagements. They got kill two kills for most of the board across Snoopy, Poe Belter, uh -oh. and Yellow Pete. He's real All close. Getting what they can. Double hook, one chain, one hook. St. Vicious doesn't look like he'll live too long in this yeah. one. And Poe Belter. Get picks himself up a third kill there to meet up with Inox. Yeah, we talked about that pick potential of the Thresh plus LeBlanc, and both of them land their skill shots there, so that's going to be a dead saint. Something that we saw last game for CLG in the Vi Leona composition was they also had that Sivir to get that lockup down, mm -hmm. and that's something they're missing this game. Talisman of Ascension as well for yep. both teams here. Uh, yeah. Saint's got to upgrade his, but Kreppel's already done. So they've got massive movement speed advantage right now. That plus Sivir is going to be able to... Uh, the Stampede. Very easily. The Stampede will start very soon. Quas is the one holding the gate on that Stampede, though. If he can land a good wall of pain... That's true. He can shut the door. Shut it very easily. Poe Belter, however, he'll fit through the window real quick. The Deathfire Grasp is finished. He is looking to cancel someone out right away. That could be a Cop, a Quas, or a Void Boy at this point. And Quas's build, like you said, the Ryla's the first time. Mm -hmm. I think that's the first time he's actually done that. Because usually it's, it's the Rod and then he builds yeah, the other. Yeah, you know, he's definitely tailoring it to right. what they're facing this time. It, it, trying his best to slow down everyone here from EG. Not only is it going to be the wall, which is hard to land on everybody. It's also going to be the Skittles landing slows for themselves. 
Meanwhile, you know, he's, again, he goes to the side lane, he cleans up all the minions, and he returns to base. He's just trying to power up. He's also going for um, the eventual uh, upgrade right there for the tier stack. It'll give him another shield on top of this, yeah. but it also gives him a lot of power. And any additional man that he will build after that will also provide ability power. Still waiting for the Dragons. Curse has been able to get a few under their belt coming into this matchup. 11 to 11 on the scoreboard, and it's 2K in favor of EG right now. They've been finding those kills back into their favor recently. What they can has really gone into the hands of Pole Belter. Those quick home guards keep getting him out, keep getting him into the fights that his team is creating. And Snoopy, again, on a new jungler, has been doing a great job. He's been doing a great job. Kawas is uh, in danger of getting go right yeah. here. The turret's about to go down. And LeBlanc is heading, but so is Boy Boy, and they're about even distance, so... It's like Inox pulling off is the right call. They need to work on their vision control. Both of these teams, like I said, are very similar in what they're trying to accomplish, so... Mm -hmm. The vision wars will be fought in Curse's jungle. And it looks like EG have the upper hand right now. Well, with those turrets going down, it gives EG a better chance to get into that fog of war. It gives Pole Belter some places to attack the enemies. It looks like we saw Dominate trying to do just that, but they decide not to engage. The mid turret goes down, and they have more than just mid to deal with right now. Yep, Shivana split pushing here. Inox has gone Blade of the Rune King build, so he's got dual potential. He just walks right through that wall of pain and the slows oh, here. Oh, he pulls him oh. in because he knows Po Belter's coming off. They get a good kill onto that Their one. vision lapsed in the blue side jungle, and Pobelter was able to make the quick rotation. That was very easy story there from EG. The, the wards that they just had timed out. Quas going down means that EG can pressure another turret. They have great, great wave clear, but it's hard for them to get in range to land the few auto attacks onto the turret. So their siege kind of takes a little while to get done, but they do have great harass under turret because LeBlanc and Sivir can both do a lot of damage without taking turret hits. You know, maybe one turret hit for Belter might take when he jumps in, but he'll blink right back out. Oh, the seed minion, or the wave in itself does not stand All a right, chance. All is up. Nice solar flare. They go for Inox. That's going to be locking down the Shivana. Inox still alive right now, but he does go down finally. It's going to be Voiboy Boy going down before that, though. Right to the back line. Explodes. Save Vicious. Now on to Cop. Dominate on the other side. Quas comes in, but a little too late. Is he going to be able to defile enough? Going down, Dominate cannot help the team. They waited until Quas revived, but not till he joined the team fight. They were okay with him just adding Requiem damage, but that was definitely not going to be enough for them oh. to win the team fight. And now he gets changed. There. They got the Deathfire back up. It's a one two punch, and they come out with the kill. EG feeling so on top right now. Goes for everything and a little extra. So, Curse. A little antsy there with the engage, I think. Uh, they saw EG trying to get away, and they want to capitalize since Quas is up. They all dive onto Inox, one of the tanks. And you can see Yellow P and Pobelter, the only damage that they take is from Requiem. Both of those members, the damage dealers from the back, have full reign. Yellow P and Pobelter is dealing damage the entire time. Meanwhile, the counter engage from Dominate doesn't turn out well. And then Quas is left by himself. He does fall prey to the skill shot CC. And it's another uh, turret there for EG. But Curse are able to answer back in Dragon and keep the game close. Close indeed. They aren't back more than 5,000 gold right now. They are, however, down four turrets right now. That's a lot of potential gold that sits on the map for them. If they can get that in one quick influx, they really may have a chance to swing things and take EG by surprise. But as it stands, EG knows they have the upper hand. And with all the outer turrets fallen, it's hard for Curse to be even in their own jungle. Yeah, I mean, those turrets are standing there. That's basically global gold that yep, Curse yep. want to pick up. But you have to actually kill it to get that gold. <laughs> and it's very it's hard for them you. to get outside of their side of the map. Once your vision control lapses, for a split second, it's hard to get it back because now they're going into uncharted territory every time they want to place those new wards, and they have to have multiple people. You can't just send one person. You can't just send someone like Crepo uh, or St. Vicious over there by himself with a sight zone because he'll get picked off. Yeah. 
Once Curse makes that fight happen, it's an uh -oh. all Oh, Dominic in. gets picked up. Oh. There it is. The play first, waiting for the hook. He kind of gets out of that one, but I don't think he's going to get out of everything as the team just buckles down and locks yep. him in for a kill. You see somebody pop on the hunt, and then you get another person. The Solar Flare coming out. Inox actually able to get on the other side of that. Very nicely done. One person on the hunt's down. Wow, look. St. Vicious wandered a little too close. Stampede yep. continues. They can't find another target and run him down. Quas is at the bottom, but he's got Teleport. It's a fairly early Baron, but Karthus is a great answer for turning this around. Let's see if Curse actually try and commit. Dangerous, actually, for both teams here. They are going for broke on this one. They are getting the Teleport, and Boy Boy almost gets shredded completely out of the fight. He's sitting with oh. one-third health now. That was not the most ideal spot to come in. But it is going to be the Requiem. There's got one. one! Can he keep going? Whoa, they focus on it beautifully. Pole Belter was waiting for that. Yeah, Azakali jumping in. They're fighting near Pink Wards already. There's already Pink Wards set up. So it's very hard for him. Akali really relies on that Shroud after jumping in like that. So it's a great call by EG. Jumping in. Uh, or uh, it blowing him up when he does jump in there. I have to say, EG are doing a really good job capitalizing on their lead. Knowing they could force Curse into yeah, this was They the dropped the Pink Ward down. You know, he runs out of the Shroud. That's why they drop it down. But once he does go back in here, he's got no shroud left even to use since it had already timed Boom. out. He just gets annihilated. Yeah, he'd already tried to use the shroud. Jump down, double pink wards. So EG again, they're, they're probably just going to continue to look for those fights, uh, make use of on the hunt to catch people out and uh, run over multiple members of Curse. Yeah, why not? Don't fix it. If it's not broken, continue to proceed with the kills. 20 to 13. In fact, we got 33 kills here in a 27-minute game so far. 47,500 for EG. They got a nice lead on Curse. And a lot more teams in North America and Europe have been playing like they have the lead. They're not waiting back and saying, do we have it? Can we do this? A lot more sure play coming out of these teams. Yeah, and EG are a team that's been struggling, so it's yeah. nice to see them with this confidence to go for those Barons to bait right. Curse over yeah. and to make the starts of the play so they can finish this game strong. They're doing a good job so far, and they've been fairly well coordinated. It's just, will Curse be able to uh, pull it back together? Because, mm -hmm. as we said, they gave up vision on that side of the map, and they are not having an easy time getting it back. I'm looking at this. You see 10 assists down the board for most of EG to bring up that kill participation uh -oh, again. Oh, he's going in again. Oh, St. Vicious. He just wants to ward. That's all the support wants to do. But he's making himself killed. That, however, was a huge true shot barrage that just nuked out Pobelter in the fight. Yellow Pete's on the backside. EG oh. is very split here, and they're going to be caught chasing with they tunnel into something bad. Oh, he gets it on the end of the boomerang. Yellow Pete with gets the himself. blaze. He's, he's on got the run. it. He's got it, and he gets out. Wow, he survives in the end. Great boomerang blade over the shoulder, too, to grab the exit kill. It's EG again, two more kills. Rewarded because of their vision, and Saint trying to go face check that bush. Oh. This is the second attempt here. Karthus is up again. He's got Requiem again. Will they go contest it? Smite the Second smite. time. I got him! Oh, very nice. Pobelter's down. That's huge damage coming in. It doesn't look like they want to get into this pit yet. No, so Quas does. Quas is in the pit. He goes right to the back line. The boomerang comes out from Yellow Pete and shreds him down. They quickly get out of any Baron's range. Regenerate. Oh, they don't want to go for it. Okay, yeah. They're going to be safe. There Requiem's goes. down from before. They're all right. All right. So, Baron, the buff that he puts on you, one of the buffs does increase your magic damage taken. That's why I say Karthus yeah. is so good against, debuff. against these. Exactly. <laughs> When Quas goes in there, you know, all he has to do, Requiem, takes out Pobelter, and that will be the second of the Baron Bates. This wow, one didn't go as well. 500 damage there. Yeah. All right. So, again, he just comes back in. He sacrifices his life, though, again. Every time they do this, Quas is sacrificing his life. So they lose another member. It's another kill for EG. But they don't let them get the global gold or the buff from Baron. So Curse are doing a good job of stalling this one out. They're trying to get... Uh, hold on. And, and as you can see, Boy Boy is going for that Zanyas since EGR getting so many pink wards. He wants another option after he dives in. So he'll be able to pop the Zanyas this time if he doesn't get CC'd immediately. He's going to have to be uh, very quick with that finger. Yeah. And EG has been very quick on these fights. A slow laning phase we saw. The bottom lane, not many kills to come. But you look now at Crepo. 
two for 17. The two and 17 means he's been in 19 of these kills. It's been the fights for EG to get these kills in. And they've basically won each of them, maybe losing one here or there, but they've gained so much control of the map that it's always in their favor. No, and it's, it's really hard for Curse to take down a member of EG because as soon as you know, Voidboy commits, he has to dive all the way in there. The whole team is in. He's getting yeah. focused. And EG have two very, very strong tanks right now. Snoopy coming from the jungle has gone full tank. So that Volley Bear is not a target. He, he should <laughs> not be looking at him in any way since he also has his passive to rely on. Yep. And, and Inox, it has sort of allowed him to go hybrid damage here, both with Blade of the Rune King and Sunfire. Since they have two very beefy tanks, their front line extremely hard to get through. And Thresh as well adds a lot of peel for the back line. So it's a very solid front line here for EG. And Cursor having a hard time getting through it. Banshee's Veil's already coming out for Evil Geniuses. Just shows how far they are ahead. Almost canceling out, you know, Quas's Requiem if it comes down to it. They yeah. no longer initiate with that if they wanted to. Quas usually trying to help out during the fight with it. So it could still work if he can get some pops. Yeah, he's gone. Uh, he went with the early utility right. of the Rhylized Crystal Scepter and then into the Zanya since he's dying so much. But that means that he doesn't have Matic Penetration. He hasn't mm -hmm. got that third item Void Staff that really makes Karthus kick it into overdrive. Till he gets that Void Staff, he's not going to be hitting that hard. Uh, he does have a lot more survivability with the shield and the Zanyas, but Man Saint again gets caught. Oh, he just wanted to ward over the wall this time. Boy, boy, going for Poe Belts are very low. He sends the clone off to the left, tries to hide in the brush, but he goes for a great kill and finds the right target. Boy, boy goes down after that. A lot of the DPS is gone. The sur surrounding Snoopy now coming in from the side is Inox. How big is he? Oh. A 3v2 situation. He dives to Baron. They're going to go ahead and take down Cop, Snoopy, and Inox. Make it out as the tanks. Curse, answer it though. This is three for three. That's much, much better for yeah. them. And they're finally able to get a little bit of control in the red side jungle. They took out one of the pink hordes, and that, that Bush Saint keeps trying to get over to. Still has an EG pink ward in it. I don't know if those all see each other. There's some weird angles in that bush. You can see all three of them right next to each other, but they don't exactly see. So Saint, even though he flashes out, he's going to go down here once it starts. But Curse don't give up on it because Voiboy Boy got such a good lead on Pavelter as far as damage trades. They take him out early. And Curse, as we said with those tanks, very heavily uh, focusing on the importance of tanks, they actually only have two real damage dealers. If one of them goes down, then right. they don't have a lot more power left in this fight. So it was a good answer here from Curse. So that's what the fight looks like when everybody's in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to say at this point, I would recommend St. Vicious a scrying orb if he wants mm -hmm. to see what's going on in that bush because he has not had any luck getting into that uh, red buff bush there. Looking around at some of the CS, the mid laners obviously fighting each other a hell of a lot this game. Pretty low CS, 185 to 167 between those two. You look at the top, Quaz and Inox, 270 to 234. So the lead's still in the favor of EG here. But you can see the CS kind of telling a story of how the lane went. We're 33 minutes into this game. It's about a 10,000 gold lead. Well, I'd say nine exactly oh, right now. 9,000 gold lead means a hell of a lot in a fight, and that's going to be a one quick dead quas. Boy Boy is the focus now. The Requiem comes down, like we said. That's a utility card that's coming through. Double Both kill for Boy Boy, down. though. Can he get some more resets? No, he goes down. Inox was able to bite him through. Cop goes down, and it's still Inox and Snoopy. They were alive at the end of last fight, and they're, in the the li or they're alive at the end of this fight. World of tanks here. We've got tanks on tanks. <laughs> Dominate trying to run from Snoopy, and he's stampede. got another ball breaker. They're galloping along. This is getting intense. The slow walk. Come on, fight him. Fight no, the bear. Okay. I, think the claws. We, I think we can calm down here. This is probably going to take a while. So <laughs> let's let's take a take a deep breath to get a sip of water. We've got two one-on-ones that are going to take a, about five minutes each. So they actually just give up. <laughs> Dominate. Oh. Hey, go back in there. Oh, no. Roar. Roar. Snoopy declaring that he won that fight by default since Dominate backed off. First, yeah. Won the chicken. Let's see right. how this works. So the Solar Flare missed to start it off. But look at the focus under the damage here. Pavelter gets annihilated by Boy Boy. And then it automatically switches over to Yellow P. Dominate in the back, able to take out the second damage source. Meanwhile, the tanks are left. And there's nowhere left for Cop to go. Even on Ezreal, he's used both blinks already. And then the fight lasts another 10 minutes. <laughs>
This is what we're saying about the all-ins here. Boy, boy, once he's in, he's in. St. Vicious going in. Dominic going in. Those bottom three on these rosters have died almost every time in these past fights. Quas actually went down that last one because he's playing a bit of the zombie Karthus this game. But that's what they have to put themselves to so far. They have been getting the kills. They're creeping up ever so slowly to EG here, but they're still down. Yeah, and the, the focus really for the damage dealers now, when, when all these fights keep end up tanks on tanks, both the damage dealers need to get sources of penetration. So that's why I think that that Quas Void Staff has so much importance. They really mm. need that item on him since he'll be able to sort of take down everyone around him and soften up those tanks for the late game. Well, if that midline of EG can stay alive, Snoop A, seven kills. Pole Belt are seven kills. Yellow P, seven kills. And Inox has six. That kill participation, again, we got to keep bringing it back, is mm -hmm. immense from Evil Geniuses. But it means also that they should be able to finish out this game a little easier. Yeah, they're, they're definitely looking to keep Pope Belter and Yellow Pete alive as long as yeah. possible. Yellow Pete with the Banshees on top of his spell shield is not going to be a target for Dominate to ultimate here. So Dominate, pretty much every fight, mm -hmm. is going to have to ult Pope Belter. Uh, since Pobelter has not had a chance to get his defensive item yet. Oh, another pick. That was absolutely huge. You have to consider they're just over the side of the wall every time yeah. now. It's been one after the other on to Curse. Yeah. Again, focusing in now to the Wraith Pit. Krepo's going to be in the middle of the fight. The Zanya's for Quas, but everybody's kind of just working around the Defile damage. Now they can focus on him. That's how big they are. It's got to be. The title of this match is the, the Vision Wars here. EG are doing such a tremendous job using that Fog of War to their advantage. They've gotten so many picks on that red side jungle. Cursus coming over, walking so close to an area that they yep. have no vision of. And this time, it's going to cost them Nexus turrets. This is going to be Nexus turrets and possibly the Nexus. They have 11 on Dominate. He does have an ult, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The head-to-head, -head, again, going in favor of EG. Now 2-0 to zero versus Curse. In the spring split, the Nexus is going to go down here in a 37-minute matchup. 33 to 21 kills as EG takes oh, the win. Gotta be excited about this one.